So even though I'm on vacation, hence the non-anime shirt, I haven't, um, I haven't watched as much anime as I thought I might, but I never seem to, so maybe that's not too much of a surprise. Um, basically, let's see, the four things I did watch. Uh, first of all, I watched four more episodes of Flame of Rekka. It's pretty okay. Not, nothing about it is jumping out as the most awesome thing ever, but it's not bad, it's just... Kind of usual, I think. Maybe if I were to try and describe it, it almost feels like a cross between the Verona Kenshin series and uh, Yu Yu Hakusho in, in ways, I think. Not exactly, but it, it, there's kind of a similar feel between all three of them, I think. Uh, it's kind of hard to place exactly what it is, at least since I haven't bothered trying to think about it, but oh well. Uh, let's see. I watched... Miyuki-chan in Wonderland, and that was very strange. About all I can really think about, having watched it, it contains both episodes of the OVA, that would be Miyuki-chan in Wonderland and Miyuki-chan in Mirrorland. Um, I think Miyuki-chan is just um, like the original Alice in Through the Looking Glass or something like that. So She's probably on some sort of drug and hallucinating badly, and in her sexually repressed internal raging lesbian is trying to get free because in her version of Wonderland and Mirrorland also, um, all the occupants are women trying to sexually molest her. It's kind of amusing. At the same time, uh, when it starts out, you kind of wonder if the main star is supposed to be Miyuki or her underpants. Funny things, but mm, there's nothing about it that's really um, storytelling since it really just goes scene, 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 scene. It's just more like a rapid succession of images that kind of suggests an idea as opposed to trying to execute it in a way where you feel like you're watching a story. That doesn't mean it's not entertaining, though. It means, though, that if you're really hoping for an Alice in Wonderland story or something derived from that, this is probably not the anime to watch. But there could be other reasons to want to watch it. Let's see, I watched A Wind Named Amnesia, first of all, because the idea sounded really awesome, and second of all, because I think I've heard people talk favorably about it. Now, watching it now, I think my expectations were probably put a little too high um, going into it, because when I watched it, it, it wasn't bad. It, it just felt like they could have done a lot more with the idea. As a rough example, uh, I mean, I'm not sure if I can really give an exact example, but... A general idea I got when I was watching it, I was trying to evaluate um, how much a coworker would actually enjoy it. He um, he he likes um, zombie stuff, zombie apocalypses, because um, what, the main overall thing he likes is he likes to he likes to see what people do when a uh, civilization starts collapsing and whatnot. So that makes a series like The Walking Dead really, really, really high on his list of most awesome things. Probably, I don't think he ever put it that way to me, but. Given the way The Walking Dead was executed, I would guess that that one was pretty high up there in terms of examples of uh, good examples of what what he'd enjoy about it. And it occurred to me, just as I started watching A Wind Named Amnesia, that it may actually be something that falls under his radar and he may be interested in. And he probably still would be, but it ended up being a little more cheesy, silly, straightforward than I actually thought it was going to be. This is a guy who doesn't watch a lot of anime, so I was kind of hoping that they could have done more with the idea, as in, like, continue going the weird route of lots of anime things, but... I don't know. It's kind of difficult to say. I guess the issue is that it kind of focuses on this hope that people are going to return to being normal people or something like that, and throw some mindless adventure in there, maybe? I say mind. Well, no, I'm gonna to have to call it um, stereotypical action, which I guess I would call uh, mindless action. Isn't like y you can just decide, oh, there's gonna be this kind of action scene in there, and then you're you're automatically saying, oh yeah, well they're gonna sacrifice a girl. Yes. <sighs> Not bad. Just failed to live up to my super high expectations. 
Uh, let's see. And then that leaves the final thing I watched, which was Video Girl Eye, which I was actually quite, um, I, I actually enjoyed. Um, I especially liked that very, um, I, I don't know how to describe the ending, so I kind of really enjoyed the ending. If you watch it, make sure you watch the ending credits, because it kind of suggests to you what happened afterwards. Or rather, it, it almost blatantly states it, but... Yeah, it was actually quite enjoyable. I wasn't no, I didn't know what to expect. I certainly didn't expect a six-episode OVA. I was kind of expecting a couple-episode OVA. So shorter than that, with less of a story to it, etc. So it ended up being enjoyable. So let's see. I guess the reasons why I did not get a lot of anime watching done is because there was people over the weekend. And I, I've been doing a lot more Portal 2 stuff, actually. Got to get that out of the way. And that, that ignores also that I've been getting back into Minecraft. Because with Minecraft, I can usually watch some series while it's going on. And then there's also Rune Factory Frontier. But I haven't been playing that one as much enough to really make a dent in the anime collection. I'm just getting back into it. So then Portal 2 has been the real time sink. And I guess since my last update... I never really quite finished talking about Portal 2 because I hadn't finished at the time. And now that I have finished it, I have to say, I really enjoyed the experience. And I had a chance to play through it again over the weekend for somebody. And it's just cool. I also played through Portal 1 over the weekend. And um, it's kind of interesting seeing the two of them side by side and how different they are to each other. But I have to say that Portal 2 was um, far more epic, far more... Yeah, it was awesome. It's not to say Portal 1 is bad. It's just, after playing Portal 2, it felt like the interactions with GLaDOS in the first one were actually a lot less um, personal. Like, it could have still been um, automated recordings going on in the background, I guess. So I'm not quite sure what Portal 2 did differently, but somehow they made the game even more personal. Surprising stuff, huh? Uh, I'd probably go into more detail. Uh, I guess the only other thing I could really mention is that I really liked the ending. And uh, although I didn't care about the ending song as much the first time, it kind of catches on pretty quickly. So, in that way, it's not a lot worse than Still Alive. It's just um, not, not as immediately catchable, I guess. Immediately catchy? Maybe? I don't know. Anyways, th um, that would be this week's anime analysis. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to watch next, but a lot of neat stuff did arrive today, so I should probably focus on some of that stuff.